Let's talk about it for a moment in terms of the frontline person or, or someone who's representing a company. Within any organization, there will always be one or two employees, and hopefully more, that exemplify the type of warmth that we've been discussing. When an organization recognizes that one of its employees is that type of person, how do they go about promoting that fact, recognizing it, and then also helping other people in the organization see what this person's doing? Yeah, well, for those that are interacting with customers, in many cases, these become apparent very quickly. Customers love them, right? I know I can trust you. You're looking out for me. You're extremely reliable. You know your stuff. And they become very popular and have great customer relationships. In many cases, though, inside organizations, when we're just kind of collaborating and working with one another, Often there's a lot of confusion and often sometimes frustration because people don't really understand the way that we perceive and interact with each other. So for instance, when someone is seen to be kind of kowtowing to a manager or kind of sucking up, if you will, in a lot of cases that's seen to be you know, self-serving and disingenuous and all of that. Well, it turns out that you know, in some cases that's certainly true, but that is one of the ways that we convey warmth towards another person. I'm on your side, I'm looking out for you, I agree with you. That is a warmth you know, type behavior. Uh, and for those that are kind of more hardwired to be focused on competence, because we all kind of come with our own level set. Some of us are really great at relating, you know, naturally, and some of us are really great at more analytical, task-oriented things. And if we don't understand that it's really both parts of that puzzle that make up who we are and what's required to form relationships, we can get really resentful of either, you know, side of the coin. Hey, those people are only focused on sucking up, or these people are only focused on tasks, and we don't really recognize that those, both of those things are important. So uh, I think the, the key is to help educate employees and understand that both of those are important, both in dealing with customers as well as dealing with colleagues. It's interesting you mention that, though, because that, that leads me to think one criticism that employees often have of an organization is that they tend to pigeonhole people as this person's the creative person, this person's the task person, this person's good at managing two or three other people. How do you go about breaking that, that bond that's put on them, in, in essence, to be able to give them a little bit more freedom and, and understanding that they can play different roles? Absolutely. And I think one of the most important things is self-awareness. In many cases, we are just not aware of how we're coming off to people. Um, ironically, we have these tremendous skills for picking up and judging and accurately perceiving the intentions and abilities of others, but we have this incredible blind spot about seeing how and understanding how we come across to others. And so it kind of comes off as, in many cases, we aren't aware of how we're coming off to others, and as a result, um, that we kind of send the wrong message or that we get pigeonholed. In a lot of cases, this warmth and competence dynamics that happen inside, inside companies is kind of pigeonholed or, or kind of put under the umbrella of just politics, and it's just politics and I don't understand why people get ahead or some people do or some people don't. And it's because we're not understanding two sides of that coin and the need for them both to be in balance. And so that's one of the ways I think is making people more aware of the importance of how you're perceived in both as well as gathering feedback about how you're perceived from a warmth and competence standpoint by others. That, that notion of the balance I think we've, you've said a couple times and that's important because so often the warmth aspect seems to be just written off under the soft skill category. But tell me about that. Why, why do we need to change the conversation about it? Yeah, it's really interesting. From a talent development or talent management standpoint, you know, we spend so much time talking about competency models and skills and developing our competency and so forth, and we're missing the other side of the coin, right? That, that What is sometimes referred to as soft skills. But it turns out, in terms of how we perceive and interact with one another, those two things are really intertwined. You can't really entirely separate them because it's a combination of how we're perceived from a competence standpoint and a warmth standpoint that really causes us to form an impression and, a, and a attitude towards others. And so I think if we start to recognize that they aren't two separate things that we work on separately, but they are intertwined things that we work on together and understand how we're perceived on others, how we are coming across, and what our gaps are in certain dimensions of warmth and competence, we'll be much more effective at developing talent and collaborating effectively in the workplace.